All right, so today I'm doing something that you should never, ever do. So, warning, don't ever do this. You should not suck water into your very expensive leak detector. Now, this happens to be my personal leak detector. So you can see here that our little red dot is bouncing, which means that we have flow through the leak detector. You can see that we're definitely pulling stuff in. And so now I'm going to suck in water, which is something that unfortunately happens a lot with these leak detectors, and then techs don't know what to do and end up replacing a whole bunch of stuff. We're gonna see if there's an easier way for us to fix this when it happens. All right, so we've got the H10. I'm gonna first show that it actually works. This is my H10 that I've had for many, many moons. We've got our calibration reference here. All right, so it works. Now I'm gonna go ahead and try to destroy it. All right, so we get a little bit of water here in this cap. Pure aqua pura. Now we are going to suck water into this, just like you shouldn't do. We suck this thing full of water. I'm gonna put it inside of our degassing chamber, or vacuum chamber here. All right, I'm gonna attach our True Blue hoses to our NAVAC pump. This is the uh, NAVAC NRP8DI digital DC vacuum pump. Let's go ahead and check our vacuum pump oil. Vacuum pump oil is right where it should be, maybe a little bit on the high side, but we're right, right there. All right, now we're gonna make sure, we're gonna turn on our micron gauge here. So now I'm making sure this is valved off. There we go, we're valved off there. Open, open, this has no core in it, so we're open there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and, uh, we're gonna go ahead and turn on the vacuum pump, which with this one, you hit it twice and you kind of long hold the second time, just a little bit. So here you can see we're dropping. Our two micron gauges are pretty close. This one's gonna lag a little bit. From this one. But what we want to see is this this vacuum chamber when it was empty, I was easily able to get it down to 500 microns. We're gonna see how far down we can get this thing. Now again, this vacuum chamber, like any um, system that has seals and things, it's not perfectly sealed. And so, and even this gasket around here isn't gonna be perfectly sealed, but it's still effective enough that we can get it low enough that it will, it'll start to uh, get the moisture out. If you can look in here, you can see, I just saw some bubbles coming out of the tip there. So moisture is coming out at the end of that thing. So we're at the, we're below the boiling point now. We're just using this to get all the moisture out. Right. If you look right here, even with that small amount of moisture, we already have some fouling of the oil. The oil's a little bit creamy there. You saw how clear it was before. So that gives you an indication of how small amount of a moisture, what a small amount of moisture can do, um, will show up in your vacuum pump oil on a typical system. That, those few drops I had were enough to foul uh, your oil in your vacuum pump. All right, so now we're just gonna run this until this thing gets down to 500 microns or so. Um, and then we're gonna test the vacuum pump again. All right, so you can see we are at 177 microns on the pump. We're at 452 microns here. I know that this assembly is somewhat leaky, but just as a demonstration, we'll valve it off here and see if we jump up. And, uh, and we are jumping up, but not nearly as fast as we were initially. So I'm pretty confident that this thing is dry. Let's go ahead and see. All right, so uh, one stupid thing I did that you probably noticed if you watched me do it is I, <laughs> I put the old one in there with the test file and so it boiled off all of the, <laughs> all of the refrigerant in the test file. So uh, now we gotta use a different test file. So that was kind of a waste. So lesson there, when you, if you are ever gonna do this, make sure to pull everything apart as best you can, pull the tip off, um, pull the uh, sensor out, all that before you uh, go ahead and, and do it. But we got it all below 500. At this point it should be dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, tip filter in you should leave these on your um, leak detector if you have one of these back rack leak detectors anyway because it helps prevent you from sucking water up in the first place because it has this little air gap here on the side that prevents, helps prevent the moisture from coming in. So now we're gonna go ahead and hook her up and see how she do. 
So now you can see we're floating the ball, which we would not be doing if this thing was full of water. We're going to let it warm up and then we're just going to make sure that it works with the reference bottle. You always got to wait for these things to warm up a little bit before you start trying to use them. Now we've got the consistent tick, 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 ready to make sure that it's still working. So it is working. I still wouldn't suggest doing this ever because who's to say that maybe this didn't damage something. But if you ever do pool moisture into your leak detector, well, by golly, this is a way to uh, get it cleared up. I'm Brian with the HVAC School Podcast and HVACRSchool.com. Thanks for watching.